Okay, thanks for joining me here this morning. We're going to be doing something a little more advanced today, uh, but it's nowhere near as complicated as people often talk about it being, or for that matter, as people tend to show it being when they demonstrate how to do it. We're going to be making a dovetail drawer. Uh, now, I could show you how to make a dovetail drawer with a saw and some wood, but we're going to model it here in Fusion 360. Uh, and uh, people always ask me this question. You put so many drawers in your projects, like really so many drawers, doesn't it take you absolutely forever to model them? And I say, well, there's two parts of that. One is a lot of the drawers are the same, so I can just model it once and copy it. But the other part is a dovetail drawer doesn't have to take you hours to model. You can do it really, really simply, and I'm just going to show you how to do that. So we're here in a totally basic, standard, unmodified setup of Fusion 360. The only thing that I'm going to do change uh, from the uh, basic setup is I'm going to change over here, right click on the cube and say perspective with ortho faces. And that means all of my three dimensional models that have straight lines are going to show up as straight lines the way you would expect to see it in a photograph rather than in a blueprint. And I think that just makes it so much easier and more intuitive for anybody to look at. I, I much prefer it this way. Other than that, I'm just going to leave everything the way that it is in the basic setup. Um, of course, I'm here in metric, so I'm going to model this in metric. If enough of you want me to show this same procedure in imperial measurements, I will do that. So I do some of these demos in imperial as well uh, to make it easier for our friends in America. Uh, OK, so let's get started. We have our project here, Dovetail Drawer Live Demo, January 12th, 2022. 2022, man. Okay, so we are going to click over here on New Sketch. And I'm going to sketch on the bottom of our axis. Now, the reason I'm going to do that, and I've explained this in a few other videos, but the reason that I'm going to do that is when you want to model something, Think about it like you're taking a two-dimensional x-ray photograph of it and drawing in the dimensions. You want to communicate the most information possible to somebody with those dimensions. So which perspective is going to be best? Now, if you're going to draw a drawer, most of those dimensions are going to be bottom up, top down. It doesn't matter which direction, but they're going to be vertical because the only other dimension you really care about is the height of the drawer. Well, we can add the height of the drawer in a minute, but all the other dimensions we want to stick in based on the top-down view. I'm going to zoom out a little. Uh, if you haven't figured out how to zoom in, if you use your the uh, scroll button on your mouse and you roll down, it zooms out, and you roll up to zoom in. If you want to move around, just click that middle mouse button and drag around your screen, and you can drag the camera. I'll show you how to rotate around when we get back to the three-dimensional view. We're in the two-dimensional sketch view at the moment. Now, I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to pick a center rectangle. And we're going to center everything on the origin. The origin is the middle of most projects. It's not the middle of every project, but it's the middle of most projects. Now, we're going to just draw a center rectangle. And that's perfectly fine. Now, when you want to get out of a tool, just hit Escape. And now we're out of the tool. This center rectangle represents the outside boundary of our drawer. But it doesn't actually represent the lines of the drawer. So we're going to actually turn this into reference lines, which is one of the really important features of Fusion 360. We can draw a bunch of lines that guide where our mathematics are going without having them actually change where we're going to put the three-dimensional objects when we switch over. So this is just a guide for where we're going to put stuff. So if I click on this line, it selects the line. But here's a trip. Here's a tip, a trick, both at the same time. We'll call it a trip, because, you know. If I double click on this, it selects all the sides of this rectangle at once. Now, if I hit X, I'm going to change it to a dotted line. And you see the area under it goes away. So we're not going to have to worry about selecting that area anymore. Now let's give our outside boundaries some dimensions, OK? We're going to make this by clicking on the line and then clicking on our dimension tool. 
we will make it 320 millimeters wide. And we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to make it 520 millimeters deep. So we have a 520 millimeter deep drawer and a 320 millimeter wide, uh, wide drawer front and back, of course. So that's our outside boundary of our drawer. Now, we really only need to have two other things. We need to have a front, and we're going to draw from our rectangle tool over here. We're going to draw from the outside edge to the middle. We'll talk a little bit about why the middle in a second. And we're going to draw a side from the top of our front up here again to the middle. Now, it doesn't matter how big these rectangles are. That's the really important part. When you're drawing something, it really, really doesn't matter how big it is. Now, we've got our two rectangles. We've drawn one of the four corners of our drawer. Now, if I go up here, I want to make sure that these two pieces are made of the same thickness of wood. So if I click on this equals constraint, and I say I want this side to equal this side, Okay, now they're the same. But it doesn't know what that dimension is, it just knows they're the same. So I'm going to click on this D dimension tool up here. Then I'm going to pick one, it doesn't matter which because they're both equal now. Click on it and then click on the background somewhere. And I'm going to make this 18. So I just type it in, 18, enter. That means that our drawer front and drawer side are both 18 millimeters thick. Now, the only other thing is, it really doesn't know that these lines end at the middle. So I'm going to pick this coincident constraint. That means two things happen at the same time. So I pick that, and I select, by zooming in, this line. And that line has to line up with the center. And now it turns black. So now it knows where it is. If I go over and do the same thing, click this line, and the center, now this line has gone black and our model is fully defined. If a model isn't fully defined, you have a problem because nothing actually knows where it is. It might look all right, but when you actually go to do anything, you can start dragging stuff around and it gets really messy. So before you ever finish a sketch, make sure you fully define all of your things. That means they all have to become black. So if you notice, all of our red lines from before have turned black. Those are the guides, the reference lines. And all of our blue lines have now turned black. So we have a front and a side. Now, of course, they're just butt jointed together at the moment, right up against each other. But don't worry about that. We're going to add the tails later. And that's where everybody gets so confused about this. They try to do everything at once. But no, take it step by step. Fusion 360 is a modeling software that goes along this bottom edge here one step at a time. And we can even change those steps at any point in the future. So don't try to do too much at once. So if we say finish sketch, and we go out here, I said I was going to show you how to model in 3D and move around the screen. If you hold down the middle mouse button and drag around, it moves our 3D sketch. But if I hold the Shift key on the keyboard and do the same thing, I'm now able to rotate around in three dimensions. Now, remember, we have this cube over here. So if I ever want to see the front, I can just click the front. And if I want to rotate around, I can drag the cube over and see the left. Or I can drag it up and see the top. Now, the top is what we're looking for. And I'm going to zoom out a little. Now, I want to turn this sketch into a 3D model. So I'm going to click on this extrude tool, which is take a two-dimensional thing and make it a three-dimensional thing. I'll click on that, and I'm going to click on this drawer front piece. We're going to make our distance, which is the size, 128 millimeters. It's going to create a new body, which is a new three-dimensional object. We're going to talk about components in another video. But for this, we're just going to do it as a body. A body is a complete 3D object. So if you think of, uh, if you think of a book, that could be a single body, or it could be individual bodies, one for each piece of paper. But any three-dimensional object can be represented as a body. So we're going to hit OK. Now, if I hold Shift and drag around, 
we can see that we have now created half a drawer front. Okay? Remember, still half. And our sketch has gone away. So if I go up here to the tree on the left and I open the sketches folder, I can click on this nice little eye icon right next to the sketch and I can turn it back on. And now I can rotate around and see the top again. Now if I click on this extrude tool and click on this side that we drew, I could type in 128 again, but we might want to change that later. So instead of typing it in, I'm going to say, let's just use the piece we already have. So we have extent type, distance. I'm going to change that to to object. And it's going to say, OK, pick an object. And I'm going to click the top edge of this drawer front. And now it's going to make the, the three-dimensional object go all the way to exactly the top edge, so from the bottom to the top. So they're going to be the same thickness. But if I ever have to change that thickness, I only have to change it once instead of twice. Remember, getting efficient with 3D modeling has a lot to do with making sure you only have to set things once. If you only set things once, no matter how many times you have to change it, it still stays very efficient. Now instead of joining these two things together, because that'll just make a single body, we want to keep them as separate drawer parts. So I'm going to choose Operation New Body and hit OK. Now if we go over here to our Bodies folder, I can turn them on and off. Turn on and off the front, on and off the side. They're two separate pieces. And we're done with this sketch, so I'll turn that off and get it out of the way. Now if I rotate around and I take a look, well, this is a butt joint. It's not very strong. For one, we've got end grain going right into side grain here, and uh, that's not going to be very great. Yeah, glue will hold it, but you don't want to draw this that weak. So let's create some dovetails. We're going to click on this new sketch again, but instead of sketching on the axis, we're going to sketch right here on the side of this drawer front because, well, that's where we want the dovetails to be. We want to be right there. So we're going to make these half-blind dovetails. I really don't like the look of full-through dovetails. I don't do full-through dovetails, even on the backs of drawers, because I think they look awful with the end grain showing. Now, if you want to make through dovetails, totally fine. Exactly the same procedure goes, but I always do half-blinds. Okay, so I've drawn a line from the top to the bottom, and we've made it some distance from the edge. But if I click on the dimension tool, and I pick that line and the edge of the drawer front, I'm going to tell it exactly how much I want it to be offset. So I will type 3, make it 3 millimeters, and hit Enter. Now we have our face panel. So we're going to make our half-blind dovetails go all the way to that line that is 3 millimeters inset from the face. With me so far? Now, we need a center point, because everything is going to be mirrored across the center point. Now, I don't know how you make dovetails, but I always make dovetails in odd numbers, and I always make the center dovetail right in the middle of the board. Sometimes I make it the same size as all the other dovetails, sometimes I make them different sizes, but there's always a center one. So I'm going to draw a line, and if you try to get close to the middle, you will get this little triangle that shows us that that's the midpoint. That's the middle of this line. And if I just draw from one middle to the other middle, I have a line right through the center. If I click on that line and press X, it becomes a guideline. So it's not going to be dividing any of our dovetails. Now there's only one other thing we need. We need the edge of the tail. So I'm going to click on the line tool, and from the back of the front face to the dividing line, I'm going to draw a line. Now, we don't really care what angle that is at the moment, but we know we have a line. And our, drawer, uh, our tail is going to be symmetrical across this line. So I'm going to go up here to Symmetry, click on the symmetry, it, in constraints if you need to find it, constraint symmetry, but sometimes it, it shows up as a, as a little icon up here as well, and it looks like two mirrored things across a line. And that's how it works. Uh, and you can do that, but in this sketch, we're actually just going to mirror it. So we'll hit Create Mirror. We're going to mirror this line that we just made, pick the mirror line, 
and mirror it across the center. Now, I pointed out that, uh, that symmetry constraint before, so keep in mind this icon, and it's going to appear for us in a second here. When I hit OK, see this? We are now symmetrical on all these points across the center line. So that means our dovetail we only have to worry about once, okay? So now the important part of this is that we want to define the size of our dovetail. So we're going to click on this dimension tool or push D, and our dovetail is going to be 10, milli uh, 10 millimeters from the center every, every time. In other words, it's going to be 20 millimeters across. And how much of an angle do we want? We're going to click on the inside and the outside of our dovetail, and we're going to say that that difference is 2 millimeters, which is going to give us about a, it's between 8 and 9 degrees, which I think is a nice, reasonable uh, angle for a dovetail uh, in a small part. Sometimes you want it to be more aggressive. I mean, if you're using really soft wood or something, you make this out of white pine, yeah, you want a big fat dovetail, but you probably want really big fat dovetails anyway if you're making a drawer front out of pine. Uh, actually, just don't make drawer fronts out of pine. Make them out of something that's a bit stronger. Uh, this is modeling, by the way, out of maple. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I do have all my modeling in maple because maple's my favorite wood to work with. But you could do it from cherry or walnut or, you know, ash, oak. Oak's beautiful for drawer fronts. So, yeah, model in whatever you want. And we're going to take a look at those, uh, at those views in a second uh, once we actually get our dovetails in. Now we have one dovetail, and you're thinking, it took that long to model one dovetail. I could have had the whole drawer cut by that point. And yes, yes, you probably could have, but we only need to model one dovetail. So up here, I'm going to hit Create Rectangular Pattern. And I'm going to pick the two sides of my tail. I'm then going to drag the arrow up. And you can see I've now got three tails. If I go over here and I select Distance Type Spacing, and now I can tell it how much of a space between them I want. I'm going to say I want five dovetails, so I'll change that to five. And I'm going to change it so that it is symmetric. In other words, we have tails both above and below where we were going. No, oh, I picked the wrong one. Five and symmetric. Okay? Make sure you get the right one here. Uh, the, reason you, uh, the reason it does both is you can have a pattern going in both directions, like right and left and up and down. We only need to go up and down, so we've got our distance set to zero here. And we'll change this quantity to 1, because we only need one column. But we want five rows, and we want those five rows centered. Now, I'm going to say that I want our distance spacing, sorry, yes, that I want our distance spacing to be, well, I think, uh, yeah, I think 25, 25 millimeters? Yeah, no, we'll make it 24 millimeters, I think to give ourselves a little more pin space on the outside. Let's hit OK and see how that works. If we click on this little uh, measuring tool here, the ruler, and we click the two dots, one after another, it will tell us that we have a 4 millimeter space. Not bad. That seems about right. Now we're going to go up here and we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to look at the outside and we have a 6 millimeter space. Eh, again, not too bad. Now, if we ever wanted to change that, we could zoom in and you see this little icon here with the four dots. That's our rectangular pattern. Now, instead of making it 24, let's make it 23. And I'll hit OK. And we'll measure them again. I'll hit this measuring tool and measure between these two. And we now have 3 millimeters, which I think is a better spacing anyway, which is not so bad. Now, we have a fair amount of distance between the outside and the first tail. We have 8 millimeters. Now, that's quite a bit. What if we want to change that a little? Well, we don't have to worry about recreating any of these or recreating all of them or changing all of them. 
if I just double click on this 20 and type 21 and hit enter, we now have 21. If we double click on this rectangular pattern and go back to our 24 and hit OK, we now have wider tails, but they're all wider tails. So if I click on our measuring tool here now, we still have our three millimeter spacing. And up at the top, we have our five and a half millimeters on the outside. And how big is our pin on the inside face? Seven and a half millimeters. Well, that doesn't seem too bad. You can change this to be anything you want. We're just going to go ahead with this 21 millimeter outside dimension dovetails with two millimeters on our, on our uh, tail angle and three millimeters between them, five dovetails. Just a demo, but this looks like dovetails that I would actually cut in a drawer. I'll hit finish sketch. Now, we're only going to want to work on one body. So let's go over here and turn off our drawer front. We're just going to hide it all together. And if I click on our extrude tool and pick our five dovetails. Now remember, I don't have to know how thick this drawer is. I know it's 18 millimeters, but I don't have to worry about that. If I click on distance and change it to two object, I can rotate around and click on the inside face. And now it's going to join those five tails to that piece. And I'll hit OK. Now we have five tails on our piece. If I zoom out, I can then turn back on the front. But oh, look at that. Now we don't know where the piece is because we have two physical objects in the same place. If I mouse over them, I can see this one has tails on it. But this one still has a big fat face on it. So what we need to do is cut out those tails. There's a few different ways to do it, but here's the easiest one. If I go up here to Modify and hit Combine, I can say I want to cut the face of the drawer with the side of the drawer. And I want to make sure this is selected to be Cut and Keep the Tools, because the tool is the drawer side. When I hit OK, now I can see that we have actually cut the dovetails in. Now, if you could cut five dovetails that fast, it'd be pretty good. If I turn off the drawer side, we now have this half-blind dovetail cut in. Absolutely perfect. Turn it back on. We turn off the front. You can see, see we still have our tails cut. Now let's zoom out. We currently have half a front and half a side. But we're going to fix that. Instead of having to cut all these things into all the sides, we made all of our joinery first. And now we're just going to mirror those components. So if I go up here and click on our mirror, it's in Create, by the way, Create Mirror, or you can click it on the toolbar. And I say I want to mirror the front, mirror pane, across the center. I'm going to join that and hit OK. Now, to repeat the command we just did, you can right click anywhere on the back. You can click Mirror again, but we're just going to right click and hit Repeat Mirror and do the same thing to mirror the side, select Mirror Plane. And we're going to mirror it across the center axis and hit OK. So now we have a whole side and a whole front. Let's repeat that again. Right click, repeat mirror, mirror our front across the center and make a back. Repeat mirror, mirror our side across the center and make a second side. Now we have a model here that's quite useful, but Let's make it a little more decorative so that you can see what's going on. If I hit A for appearance, I can go down here and I can pick my walnut, glossy, and I'm going to drag it onto this body, and I'm going to drag it onto this other body and hit close. So now I have a drawer that has maple front and back and walnut sides. You're probably not actually going to build a drawer like this, but it makes it so easy to see the tails and the pins. So let's zoom in and take a look at what we've accomplished here so far today. We've got our tails and our pins. Looking good, but we have a drawer that has no bottom. 
So let's flip it up on its back, click on New Sketch, and I'm going to pick to draw on one of these faces. Now I need all these dimensions to be in there. I need to know where the other pieces are so that I can draw the, the, uh, the base. Because I'm just going to draw the base and model it, right? So if I hit P for project, I need to copy the dimensions of these three other bodies. Don't worry about the projection so much. Just know that if you want to get a measurement that's somewhere else in your model into a sketch, you hit P for project, clack, click right on the, the uh, thing you want to drag in, and hit OK. And now you can see we've got a bottom. Now if you were going to put in a bottom that was exactly the size of the opening, you'd already have your modeling done. But that's not really how wood works. If it was all made of molded plastic, that would be fine. But we actually need to have a, bo a bottom that sits in a groove. So we're going to click our center point rectangle again, click in the center, and I'm going to make a rectangle. It doesn't matter how big it is. We're going to dimension it now in a second. Make all your objects, then dimension them. It's so much easier. So I'm going to drag the outside to be just inside this face. It doesn't matter how much, and I'll zoom in. If I click on my dimension tool, I'm going to say that the, the space between that line and the inside face of the drawer is 6 millimeters. 6, enter. Now I'm going to drag the top line up so that it's inside the front. I think that's the front. It might be the back, but they're the same anyway. It's going to be inside the front or the back. I'm going to click dimension, and between that and the inside face. Well, I could type in 6, but remember, we don't want to type things in twice. We want to make sure that if we have to change this to make a deeper groove or a narrower groove, it doesn't really matter as long as we only have to change it once. So if instead of typing in and I just click on the other one and hit Enter, now they're both 6. Now, you might be thinking, well, is this a groove or is this a dado? I hate the word dado, so I think people get a bit silly about this. I'm always going to call them grooves. It's not because I don't know the difference. I'm always going to call them grooves, and I recommend you do the same thing, because most people don't know what a dado is, and they're going to look at you like you have three heads. So we're getting a bit distracted, though. So we now have the model for our bottom. We'll hit Finish Sketch. Now remember, it's six millimeters inset. I'm going to turn off the four bodies we already have so you can see what we're doing. You don't have to turn them off, but it does make it a little easier sometimes to see what you're actually doing. If I click Extrude again, I can click on this middle box. That's the inside bottom. But I need to add the four pieces that overlap the sides. I just click those as well. One, two, three. And you can always drag around with your mouse so you can move. If you click with the middle mouse button, you can move the whole model around. And if you rotate in and out with your center mouse button, you can zoom in and zoom out. You don't have to worry about rotating in 3D because it's only a 2D sketch. Uh, but if you hold Shift and click the middle mouse button, you can also rotate around in three dimensions if you need to. Now, we want to have a new body with all five of those profiles from our sketch that we just made. And we're going to make it go exactly six millimeters. And that's great. If we rotate up here, we can see that our new body is going to be six millimeters. But if we turn on one of these, like our front, well, that's six millimeters in the wrong direction. So if I change this to be minus six, now we have six millimeters up inside. We're going to change this to new body, and that's great. But do we really want it to be six millimeters from the bottom? Well, yeah, we could do that, and that would be a, a rabbited bottom. But a much, much more secure way of attaching the bottom is actually going to be to have it inset. So we're going to go up here and change from the profile plane to offset. Now, which direction do we go? Eh, it's a little hard to tell sometimes. I'm going to show you how to figure it out. If we type in 6, and then we look at the side, it's actually offset the whole thing 6 millimeters down. So we'll change this to be minus 6. And now we're offsetting it 6 millimeters up into the drawer, and it's six millimeters deep in the right direction. Remember, if something goes in the wrong direction, just change it to a minus sign. 
trial and error is totally reasonable. I know how to predict it, and you will too after time. And I'm going to explain that in a later video, but don't worry about it. Just type in the number, and if it goes in the wrong direction, well, type it in again. You can always come back even later and change these things. So I'm going to hit OK, and now we have this bottom panel. And again, like the dovetails, it is overlapping our front. We're going to turn them all back on and see we've got our bottom here, body 5. You can name those if you like, but this is so simple I'm not going to bother for the moment. We have our body. Now, how did we cut out those dovetails? We click on Combine. We're going to cut the front with the bottom. We're going to repeat Combine and cut the back with the bottom. We will again combine and click the side, the bottom, and the fourth, the side, and the bottom again. And I bet if we turn this bottom off and go in to look, we now have a groove that runs all the way around the inside of our box. No problem. We'll turn our bottom back on, and our bottom fits in our groove. Now, we have a dovetail box, and that would be your box to fit in your uh, in your case piece, but I'm going to show you just one more step to make this a little more realistic because a drawer isn't a drawer without a pull. At least some way to get that thing open. Ah, you probably wouldn't put the pull on until after you put in the actual drawer, but we're going to do it today just for fun so you can see how to do a little more modeling. We're going to model on the top of our drawer front. It is our drawer front, right? Drawer front? It's not our back? Yes. Okay, drawer front. And in our, on our drawer front, we need to have a center line. Remember how to make a center line? We find the middle, and we're going to just drag a line down. Because we don't actually want to divide anything, we're going to make it into a guide line by clicking on it and tapping X. Now from the front, we're just going to make a nice little drawer pull. We're going to start from the bottom here, which is the front of our drawer. We're going to click two places, and then we're going to say that the middle is going to be on this center line. Now remember when we had the middle of our dovetails, we had this constraint that showed up automatically when we drew a mirror? Well, we're going to click on it again. Constraint Symmetry. From this point on one side of our curve to this point on the other side of our curve is going to be symmetrical along this middle line. Now our curve is right in the middle of our drawer front, and that's great. We're going to draw a second curve. Click on our Curve tool. Again, one point, another point doesn't matter where, and the third point is on our center line. And we're going to go up here and we're going to say that this is, again, symmetrical between the left point, the right point, and this middle line. We'd like those two curves to follow each other, so I'm going to go up here again to Constraints, and I'm going to make them concentric. Click on one, then the other. It doesn't matter which one you click on first. That's perfect. Now, the only other thing I need to do is tell it how big I want those curves to be. If I click, if I type D for dimension, I want to make from this point to this point exactly 120 millimeters wide, which is a pretty good width for a drawer front. I want to make the distance between the two curves, one curve and the other. Oh, it's already figured it out for me. Not bad. OK. Hmm. It is over-constrained. Over-constrained? Hmm. OK. Uh, either way. Uh, well, it's already figured out where the, uh, where the thing is going to be. The only other thing that I need to do is tell it how much of a curve do I actually want here. And I'm going to say, OK, I want a radius of 120 millimeters. I will drag the inside one in, and I will hit D for dimension. From this point to this point is also going to be 20 millimeters. So we're going to have a 20 millimeter curve here, which I think looks pretty good. Okay, 
not too bad, not too bad at all. So we've got a nice little profile. And you're thinking, huh, it's a not a bad profile, but how is that going to turn into a drawer pull? Well, if we hit finish sketch, we can now see it is here. Pretty good. If I click on our extrude tool, well, we click on this face, but now it's going to automatically try to make it right here on the top of the box. But remember what we did with our offsets. We're going to click on Profile Pane, Offset, and I'm going to offset it down. Uh, let's say we're going to offset it down 50 millimeters. And I want it to be, well, make it 12 millimeters thick. It's a pretty thick, beefy drawer pull, and I will say new body because I don't want it to join it to the box. Again, we're not molding this out of plastic. We're actually going to make it a solid drawer pull. If we look, now we've got a drawer pull. Not bad. It's hard to see it, and what I often do is I just pick another species of wood to make it more obvious. So I'll hit A for appearance, and we're going to drag our, our walnut onto that drawer, uh, drawer pull and hit close. Well, look at that. What we've got done today is pretty impressive for just a few minutes. We have half-blind dovetails on all four corners of our drawers, and I know people are going to tell me that's not traditional, and I don't care, because I think they look way better than through dovetails, even on the back of the drawer, and I like doing them. Yes, they take longer to cut, and you could do through dovetails if you like. We have a bottom that is grooved into a six millimeter groove, six millimeters up from the bottom. We have 20 dovetails, uh, 16 pins, 16 half pins, 16, no, eight half pins, and a nice little curved drawer pull on the front on a solid wood drawer. You can make that bottom out of actual solid wood, or you could shove it in with plywood, which is what I usually do, and glue the thing in to give the drawer some extra strength. But either way, you have what looks for all intents and purposes like a traditional drawer, complete with beautiful dovetails that you can't see from the front, but you can see from the side. So I'd like to thank you for joining me here today. And uh, let me know what you would like to see next in modeling in Fusion 360. If you have any questions, stick them down there in the comments, or you can always type them in the chat during the live streams, uh, which uh, we don't have any questions today. People are totally following along. I figure people are a little overwhelmed with the, uh, with the dovetails for the moment, but I bet I'll get some questions after. Anyway, post any questions you like. I will see what I can do about answering them the next time. And uh, let me know if you really would like to see this in Imperial measurements as well. Uh, you can always just type in your own measurements. So I, I don't worry too much about whether I'm modeling in Imperial or modeling in metric, uh, because I figure if you want it to be an eighth of an inch instead of three millimeters, you'll just type in an eighth of an inch and uh, we're all smart enough to deal with that. So again, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you don't mind, if you could like this video, if you like it, I mean, if you don't like it, well, don't like it. But if you did like it, if you thought it helpful at all, click that like button, uh, share on social media if you so desire. Uh, but most importantly, if you could subscribe and come back the next time there's a live, if of course you liked this video, and uh, watch with me again, whether you watch along live or watch the recorded streams or the pre-prepared class videos, uh, I'm always going to be happy to share some of these modeling tips and other learning exercises in woodworking and language and even history with you. So if you're interested in any of those things, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm done with my little self-promotion rant there at the end. So thank you and have a wonderful day.